One of the nice things about tying your own flies is that you have the option to customize those flies to match your fishing style and the waters that you fish. Specifically, adding beads can give you flash, can be part of the fly's anatomy, and the biggest reason is to add weight. We're going to explore three different materials, tungsten, brass, and glass, and their effect on how fast your fly will sink through the water column. At the end of the video, I give you guidelines on how rapidly your fly will sink through the water. One quick note that countersink beads and slotted beads both weigh the same when I did the measurements. I like the countersink as I can wrap wire around the hook shank and then that can slide actually up into the countersink bead. There are a couple scenarios that it's important to know how long it takes your fly to get down to a depth. Using a floating line, often you're on a lake and it's in the summer and it's hot, you need to get your fly down to where the cooler water is. Or under the same scenario, but you're using a sinking line, you want your fly to sink at the same rate your line does. In fast moving water, you need to get your fly down to where the fish are, but you need to get it down quickly. So knowing how fast it will sink will allow you to get down to those fish and keep it down there as long as you can. To see how fast our beads fall, we have to look no further than the specific gravity. Because the volumes are the same and we're all on planet Earth, the specific gravity is the weight with respect to water. Tungsten is 19 times heavier than water. Then brass is about eight or nine times heavier than water. And then our glass beads are down there about two, two and a half. And also you can see that tungsten is more than two times heavier than brass. When I did the terminal velocity rate of the beads in the water, it showed true to form that tungsten falls faster than uh, glass and brass and larger beads fall faster than smaller beads. I tied fly patterns on some hooks that would be a representative of what you would put on those hooks. For example, the larger hook, I put a woolly burger and then mid-range was a caddis pupa stonefly and a squirrel nymph and then clear at the other end a uh, midge pupa pattern. So I dropped those in the water and I was surprised to see that my big heavy woolly bugger on a size 12 was really slow and my little pupa pattern fell really fast. So what's going on? If you look at the opposing forces, and specifically the downward force, it is being caused by our bead we put on there, if we had a bead on there, the hook, the hook weight, and any material on the fly that would have a specific gravity greater than one. The forces opposing our sink rate are surprisingly the amount of dressing on the fly. So like a woolly bugger has a lot of dressing on it. It has a fuzzy body that increases the drag coefficient. It has hackle on there that acts like a parachute and it has a tail that significantly causes more drag. So surprisingly to me, one of the key things that reduced our sink rate was the amount of dressing on the fly. It looks obvious now, but before I'd ran these experiments, I didn't think it would have that much of an impact. Looking at the chart again, we can see that there are trends based on the bead material independent of the bead size or the hook. The average trend for tungsten is 11 inches per second. Brass beads looks like seven inches per second. And glass at four inches per second, it's actually a little more than that, but for simplicity, we'll call it four. And with no bead on the fly, the average looks like about three inches per second. And looking at the chart closely, we can see that each of these values has a range. Tungsten's sink rate at 11 inches per second, plus or minus three. Brass's sink rate at approximately seven inches per second, plus or minus two. The glass bead shown in gray is four inches per second, plus or minus one inch per second. Then lastly, we're gonna call 
no bead on there at about three inches per second, and uh, it'll only vary a little bit out of that range. Combining all the ranges, this is what we get. For a typical dressed fly, it will fall in these ranges as shown. And this should cover about 80% of the flies we tie. I did a test case just to make sure the interpretations I made with my previous experiments was within reason. I tied a bunch of Prince nymph flies because the drag from the fly relative to the hook size would be the same for all the different beads. What I found with the tungsten bead was it was a good interpretation to get you within the ballpark of the descent rate of a fly, but extremes could still be seen at the larger flies and smaller flies. The descent rate for the Prince nymph with a brass bead fell within the range that I had estimated as well the glass bead. That one looked real close as well. With no bead on it, it fell a little bit faster than I had estimated, but still three is within a good margin of error. If you're out on the lake or the river and you pick a fly out of your fly box, you don't want to have to have a calculator to determine what the sink rate would be. So I came up with kind of an easy method of remembering that gets you real close and you can adjust it based on the fly that you're using. 12 inches per second for tungsten beads, 6 inches per second for brass beads, 4 inches per second for glass beads, and 2 inches per second for no bead. This would be easy to remember as it would be 2, 4, 6, 12. Things you can adjust for once you picked your fly out and looked at it if it has lots of hackle, has a tail, very bushy body, then you want to decrease the scent rate. If it's very thin or like a coronament pattern with very little dubbing or hackle on it, then you'll want to increase the descent rate. Let me know what you think in the comments. See if you guys have come up with anything different. Maybe we have a second episode to validate other people's ideas.